I invite you to join in making music as part of worship. You're welcome to sing. You may also choose to add body percussion to the song. Here are a few patterns you might try. The steady beat. The brush hands part is a little bit more of a challenge. It goes like this. You might get your feet into the rhythm to sound like this one. If you want an extra challenge, the snap and pat would sound like this. Okay. Let's put them together with some singing. Let's start with the steady beat. And it goes, one, two, ready, and. Ready and sing. Let us talents and tongues employ, reaching out with a shout of joy. Bread is broken, the wine is poured. Christ is spoken and seen and heard. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again. Pass the word around, loaves abound. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again. Pass the word around, loaves abound. Christ is able to make us one. At the table he set the tone Teaching people to live to bless Love in word and in deed express Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again Pass the word around, loaves abound Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again Pass the word around, loaves abound Jesus calls us in, sends us out, bearing fruit in a world of doubt. Gives us love to tell, bread to share, God Emmanuel everywhere. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, loaves abound. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, loaves abound. Good morning. Welcome to another children's church lesson. This morning we are going to be talking about the story of Zacchaeus and Jesus' visit with Zacchaeus. Today's story comes from the Gospel of Luke, which is in the New Testament. And it's in the 19th chapter, the very beginning of that chapter, verses 1 through 10. And so today, we're going to talk about how God's love can change us. And so in our story today, you will see that Zacchaeus' mind was changed because of Jesus' visit and his kindness and his friendship towards Zacchaeus. And so, I want you to think about for just a moment the ordinary acts of friendship that you have with the different people that you call friend. So what kinds of things do you do with your friends? Do you visit with them at their homes? Do you do kind things for them? Do you share your lunch or your snack with them? Do you play with them? Or are you mean to your friends? Usually, hopefully, you are not mean to your friends. Because friends don't do mean things to one another. But as we get started this morning, or today, whatever time it is that you're viewing this video, I'm going to light our candle. Now I will say, I am recording today at my office. And so I don't have my usual candle, but I have this lovely candle that smells like winter. So, we'll lit our candle again. Rem reminder, as a reminder, that you are with me and I'm remembering you and I hope that you are remembering me and welcoming, welcoming me as I am welcoming you into this space together. 
And so as we get started, will you please bow your heads and repeat this prayer after me? God, you love us and help us show love for others. Thank you, God. Amen. So Zacchaeus felt that he in order or he needed to give in order to grow closer to God. Giving is one way that we can show our love and our thanks to God. So I wonder, what are some reasons that we give? Like gifts? Why, why do we give gifts? Why do we give money or donations to people? What about those individuals who might stand on the side of the highway um, asking for money? Why do we give money to those people? Or why do we give food or water to those folks? Well, sometimes it's to make them happy. Because, you know, when we give gifts to our family members, we love to see them happy. Maybe it's to show that we care for that person. Or to thank someone for something that they've done for us. Or maybe even it's to help provide for somebody else's needs. And so, I wonder what kinds of ways you have shown friendship or generosity to somebody else. And so today's story, again, is called Zacchaeus Responds. And remember, this comes from the New Testament, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19. If you're following along in your leaflets, this is the picture of the story for today's lesson. So if you want to follow along, feel free to pull that out. If you need to pause the video at this point so you can pull that out, go ahead and do so. So this is the story of Zacchaeus. Every day, Zacchaeus sat down at his tax booth and collected as much money as he could. It was his work. Every day, people frowned at Zacchaeus as he collected money. Every day they looked the other way when they saw him on the street. But every day, he also had a little more money. Money for a beautiful home and fine food. Money for all the things that he wanted to own. And then one day, everyone was talking about the news. Jesus was coming to Jericho. Zacchaeus joined the crowd that was lining the road to see Jesus. But Zacchaeus was not able to see Jesus, and so Zacchaeus ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore fig tree. He knew he would get a good view of Jesus from there. Finally, Jesus came down the road. As he reached the place where Zacchaeus was, he looked up into the tree and said, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down from there. Today, I must stay at your house. Zacchaeus hurried down, delighted to welcome Jesus to his home. People who had heard, who had heard what Jesus said began to grumble. <clears throat> Why was Jesus eating with a tax collector like Zacchaeus? Why would Jesus want to be the guest of someone who was a sinner? Zacchaeus collects taxes for the Roman government, said someone. He got rich from cheating people like me, said another. While the grumbling was going on outside... Jesus ate with Zacchaeus and talked with him as a friend. Zacchaeus told him, Look, I will give half of my possessions to the poor. If I cheated anyone, I will give them four times what I took from them. And Jesus said, Today salvation has come to this house. Thanks be to God. So let's reflect on this story for just a moment. I wonder why, out of all the people in the crowd in Jericho, why did Jesus cho choose to visit with Zacchaeus, a tax collector who nobody liked? Could you imagine getting ready to welcome Jesus into your home to host a dinner party for Jesus? Wow. I wonder what Zacchaeus said, or what Jesus said to Zacchaeus when Jesus came to Zacchaeus' house. Hmm. Because remember the story said that Jesus talked to him as a friend. And so what kinds of ways would a friend talk to another friend? Hmm. 
I wonder why Zacchaeus thought giving to the poor was the was what he needed to do after speaking to Jesus. And finally, I wonder what you can do to make things right when you do something wrong. Because lots of people thought Zacchaeus was doing something wrong by collecting extra money from people. So I wonder what you do when you realize that you've done something wrong. You see, Zacchaeus changed after Jesus talked to him as a friend. So I wonder, what kinds of conversations do you have with your friends? Some of those things might be, what did you do this weekend? Or, how was your family? Did you see the latest episode of a certain TV show? What's new with you? Or, I like your shirt. Where did you get it? You see, talking with a friend can be enjoyable. And at times, it can be comforting. And so I think Jesus might have been talking to Zacchaeus as a friend, as the scripture tells us. But how exactly does a friend talk to one another? Well, with kindness, with joy, and as a comfortable conversation partner, right? So, what can we change when we treat someone like a friend? What if we treated everyone that we spoke to, no matter who they were, whether we knew them or not, as a friend? What would change? So maybe when we talk to somebody as a friend, we can think of these kinds of situations. Maybe we can welcome a new person as a friend. Maybe that would be someone in your class, a new student, or maybe it's somebody new at church. We can welcome them as a friend. We can cheer up someone who's having a bad day, whether we know them or not. And maybe even helping someone with a task that they couldn't do alone. Those are all good ways of treating somebody as a friend. So, as we finish up this lesson today, I want to remind you of your leaflet. Remember, always on the front page, there's a retelling of the story. Today, because I know you don't get enough of this at home, right, with school being closed for, for COVID, but also because it's summertime, you get to do some math today. I know you're excited about that. I'm not a huge fan of math. I'll go ahead and tell you that. So I have a little bit of difficulty with this. So, you know, if you don't like math, maybe you can ask your parents for some help. So this kind of can help you understand how do you divvy out or divide out um, these different things for these different folks in these pictures. And then some of you may be really big fan of, fans of doing experiments. I know Isaac, my son, is really excited about doing experiments. And so this is a way that you can experiment how things change. And so this first one is you take some vinegar and you take some milk and you mix them together. Now, I will say, it might not smell very good, so hold your breath. Um, but this is a really neat experiment where you can see that if you add one thing to another, like friendship to a conversation or with somebody that you don't know, that person or you, that friendship, that relationship can change. And so whenever you add the milk to the vinegar, it will become more of a solid and so um, you can use this experiment. Um, make sure that you ask for mom and dad's help for this one, okay? And then this one is a salt shaker and a piece of ice. And so I don't know if you've ever done this, but if you take a piece of ice out of your ice box or your, your freezer at home, and you, add, you put that on a piece of, uh, or on a paper towel or on a plate, and you put salt on top of it, just regular salt, and then see how that ice cube changes. Does it grow? Does it melt? Does it stay the same? I don't know. So you'll have to do that for yourself to see how whenever, whenever you add something, something changes. And then finally on the back, there are these cool little coupon, as you might want to call them. You might want to call them tokens. But there's some one that says, you are loved, have a great day, peace, smile, you are talented, blessings. 
These are all things that you can cut out. Again, you might want to ask for help from your parents, but these are tokens that you can give to somebody, anybody, a family member, could be somebody, if you're going to the grocery store with your families and you see that somebody looks down and out, you could give them this one that says, you are loved. And that might completely change that person's day. And then also, there are some different boxes that you can answer questions. So how could you show love to a new neighbor? Or how could you show love to a pet? Or how could you show love to someone who takes care of you? And so these are your, this is your stuff for your leaflet this lesson. All right, so before we close in prayer today, we need to go over our faithful followers chart. And so Zacchaeus, I'm going to take my phone and move it, okay? So Zacchaeus, let's see, here's Zacchaeus right there. And so he was not in the Old Testament, right? He was in the New Testament. So we're going to put an X for Zacchaeus being part of the New Testament. And next, we know that he talked to Jesus, right? because that was the entirety of the story today. Most of it anyways. And then Zacchaeus, finally, he changed his mind, didn't he? So we're gonna mark through that as well. So, I hope that you have learned something today about friendship. After hearing the story of Zacchaeus talking with Jesus as a friend, and so at this point, I would love it if you would hold the hand of somebody who's nearby, or if you're by yourself, you can give yourself a hug, because we all love hugs, right? And so I want you to bow your heads and repeat this prayer after me. God knows my heart. God hears my prayer. With God's love, there's more to share. Amen. And now, just like we've done for the last several weeks, I'm going to give you a blessing. And so, as I taught you several, several weeks ago now, to receive a blessing, you hold your hands out like this. Palms up, ready to receive that blessing like you're about to receive a gift. And so... These words of blessing come from the book of Ezekiel. It's a funny name, right? It comes from the Old Testament book of Ezekiel. And it goes like this. I will put a new spirit within you. You will follow my laws and carefully obey my commands. And that's your blessing for today and this week. And finally, I want to start something new with you this week as I sign off for this children's church lesson. I want to start using a, uh, another type of blessing. And I want to say this. This is something that I, we used to say at my old church that I used to work at. And it goes like this. I will say, you are loved. And then you and I both will say, and there's nothing you can do about it. Now, if you don't want to repeat after me, that's fine too. But I'm still going to say, you are loved, and there's nothing you can do about it. All right, folks. I look forward to having you back next week. Next week, we are going to be talking about Nicodemus. And that will come from the Gospel of John. So I hope you will tune back in for that lesson on Nicodemus. All right, you guys, I'll see y'all later.